Here I am with the 2017 Subaru Legacy 3.6R Limited, and it's time for an oil change in this car, and this video is going to show you how to do it. Um, you're going to need seven quarts of your favorite 5W30 motor oil. Um, the oil capacity is 6.9. Um, you can actually use conventional motor oil in this car for this engine, but um, I've been using synthetic since the first oil change, so that's what I'm sticking with. I am using the Subaru oil filter. I just bought it at the dealer. Uh, it comes with a drain plug gasket as well. Um, you'll need an oil filter wrench. This is the best type to use for the setup, and you'll see why later. And I also have a ratchet and a breaker bar with a 17 millimeter socket. Um, You'll also need to uh, raise the front of the vehicle up somehow. I'm using ramps. Um, gloves are helpful. Paper towel or shop rags are good. And I also have wheel chocks. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the car is now up on ramps, as you can see. I have the back wheel chalked off there. And just for extra safe measure, I, as you can see, I stuck a couple of jack stands under the car. A um, Couple things I forgot to mention, you're obviously gonna need an, a uh, drain pan or a catch can of some sort, and a funnel to put the new oil in. And you may also need a screwdriver or two to pop off the little cover that uh, gives you access to the oil filter, which you'll see in a minute. So, let's go ahead and keep going. The next thing I'm gonna do is go under the hood here, and I'm gonna remove the oil cap. And I'll just set it up there, and I'll go ahead and crack the dipstick too. Okay, so looking under the car, we have this underbody shield right here, but this kind of oval shaped cutout is the oil pan. And you can see the drain plug right there. And then the oil filter is actually inside here. We have to remove these fasteners to get to it. So we'll go ahead and stick our drain pan, or catch can I should say and we'll drain the oil. So the drain plug on this car kind of points to the right, to the passenger side. So you want to situate your catch can so that obviously the oil drains into it. It's going to flow out kind of this way. So I'm going to remove the cap on my catch can, get it out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and just take my socket with my breaker bar and get the drain plug loosened. we go it's loose so now I'm just gonna remove the socket and we'll remove the plug by hand you can do this with your fingers so what I'm doing is while I'm unscrewing it I'm pushing the plug inward so it doesn't just fall out so you can also get a feel for when oh, okay, it's starting to drain out there there we go oh Okay, that came out really fast, and it also almost overflowed my, <laughs> my catch container here. But okay, now we're down to a slower dribble, so I'm just going to let it, let that go for a couple minutes. The next thing I'm going to do is just take the drain plug, and I'm going to remove the old gasket. I'll just stick it right there. Go ahead and wipe the drain plug so it's clean and dry and then before we reinstall it I'm gonna go ahead and well obviously put the new gasket on this is kind of an oddball shape um, the flat side goes against the uh, the head of the bolt here so it goes this way 
and now we just have to give it a few minutes to completely drain out here. All right, so we've slowed down to a drip here. So last thing I'm gonna do before I reinstall the uh, drain plug is I'm just gonna wipe off any spills that got on this plastic shield here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and wipe off the bottom of the oil pan just with a rag. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. Be absolutely sure that you don't cross thread it or strip the threads or anything like that. And after it's partially on, I'm gonna wipe the oil pan again because oil, a little bit more oil drained out there. And we'll get it tight. And just to be sure, I'm gonna take my ratchet now since it has a little bit less leverage. And I'm gonna use it to get it tight. Okay, that should be fine. You never wanna over tighten these, these plugs. Up in there is the oil filter. Um, let's go ahead and remove it. Okay, so here we have a different camera angle. We're actually looking toward the front of the car now. Um, this is where the oil filter is. And the way it's situated, this is really, if you have to use an oil filter wrench, this is kind of the only one that'll work. Um, the cap style ones cannot clear the very top of it because there's the engine block is just kind of in the way. So I'm just gonna grab the filter and there we go, now it's turning. So there's unfortunately not very much room to turn it with the wrench, but of course once you get it loose enough you can do the rest by hand. And there we go, it's starting to drip out, so. Move your catch can accordingly. And I'm gonna continue to loosen it. When you get the filter, they have a plastic film on top that you have to remove. So I'll do that real quick. Set it aside. Just keep loosening it and obviously be ready to catch it when it comes off. There we go. And always make sure that the old gasket came off of the old oil filter so that you don't double gasket it and blow up your engine when you put a new filter on. Just let that drain until it gets down to a drip. Um, while that's finishing up I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the new oil filter gasket. Just take a little bit of the old oil. doesn't really matter if it's the new or old and just wipe it around the, the gasket there so you get a better a better seal and so that it's easier to remove the next time you do an oil change. And let's go ahead and reinstall it. It goes in sideways like this. It's not straight up and down. So there we go. Okay. So you kind of just have to do it by feel. You can kind of see what you're doing, but it is a little bit difficult. And once it starts to grab, once the gasket starts to grab, it says on the oil filter, turn it, I think, three quarters of a turn. But basically just get it as tight as you can by hand. Um, okay, so I went ahead and pulled my glove off and wiped off my hand because it was covered in oil. So I also went ahead and wiped off the filter that your hand doesn't slip on it and just get it as tight as you can by hand. And I think that's good so we'll inspect and that looks like it's correctly installed. 
Okay, let's go ahead and reinstall this little plastic piece that covers the oil filter. It just goes on like that. The easiest way to do it is to take these fasteners apart and put the bottom pieces in first. And then plug them in with the other parts, with the other piece. There we go. Okay, so that's everything we need to do under the car. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the jack stands before I forget. And now all we have to do is add our 6.9 quarts. Right now I'm just cleaning off my funnel to be sure it's clear of water and rocks and dirt and other crap because we don't want that going into the engine. And we'll just put it in the oil filler where the oil cap was and we'll add our oil. All right, I'm gonna start with the five quart jug here. And we'll just get it all in there. I'll set it like that to let the rest of it drain out. Okay, that should be good. Set that aside. So that was five quarts. And here's the sixth. <clears throat> and then we need 0.9 more quarts, so we take our seventh bottle and add most of it. So if we do the math here, you can see there are the different levels here in ounces and in milliliters, but uh, one quart has 32 ounces and we need 0.9 quarts, which is exactly 28.8 quarts, or ounces I should say, sorry, 28.8 ounces. So basically the difference of that is about uh, 3.2 fluid ounces, I guess. So we want we want to get this level down to wherever 3.2 would be about. So we'll set that aside. And get that cap off of there. get most of the oil in there. I still need some more. And maybe just another splash. That should do it. Uh, we can always top it off if the dipstick shows a little bit low. Okay, I've switched over to my phone to record now because my SD card on the GoPro filled up. But anyway, as you can see here, oil, oil cap is replaced, dipstick is back in there, and theoretically we're done. But I'm going to go ahead and check our work. So let's get these wheel chocks out. So when we start the car, we want to pay attention to this oil light and make sure that it goes out. And it did, okay. So while I'm up here, I'll go ahead and back it off of the ramps and we'll just let the engine run for a minute. And then obviously we have to clean up our mess. But there you have it. The next thing to do is just make sure the vehicle is parked on level ground and check the dipstick. Um, if it's a little low, just add some oil. Um, and if not, then you're good. So there you have it, an oil change on a 3.6R Subaru Legacy.